The countdown is here. We are officially entered for the first meeting of the season on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit with the modified Fords. I've got a load of jobs to do on this. We're going to have a little debrief about how Snetterton went, what I need to do to that before I race it. Let's get started. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Rob Lewis Racing and Commentary, Icon Road Track and Race. Let's go. <laughs> Right, so in the garage, excuse all the crap that's behind me. Um, so, Snetterton went very well. Struggled with grip. The conditions, as we said on the day, the conditions weren't weren't very nice. They weren't very good. So, we didn't really push the potential of the car too much, but we just got a good base. Um, there's a lot of things I need to change that are very, very minute jobs. Um, so, we can bring up the list, which is basically, I need to change the driving position slightly because I can find that on certain corners I'm overreaching and the steering wheel's a bit too high. So, I need to bring the, steer, the seat forward a little bit and just readjust that for me. Um, adjust the pedals as well. I did a bit of work with Sam Pierce at Snetterton as well. And when I'm trying to heel and toe, it's actually, the throttle pedal's actually snagging on the side of my trainer or my racing boot. And I can't get a decent heel and toe. Um, it was night and day because when I stepped straight into the mini, it was absolutely fine. So there's there's a few little tweaks that will help me ergonomically. Uh, I've got to repair the bumper because I've snagged it a couple of times on the bottom. So I've got fiberglass repair kits here and a bit of filler. So I'm just going to tidy that up. Um, also, you could probably see behind me, I've got three lovely brand new JCW style splitters, which will actually uh, modify very nicely and bolt straight to this. So... Yeah, got my work cut out. Uh, give the engine a bit of a service as well. And I've noticed a couple of little drops of oil on the floor. So I have a sneaking suspicion that bloody sump gasket is leaking again. But we'll have a look underneath. It's not a lot. It's been sat here a week and there's a couple of five pence piece drops. So as far as I'm concerned, we'll monitor it. We never lost oil all day at Snetterton. So I think we'll do a service. We'll run it up, check it over. And I think we'll leave it for, for Silverstone, certainly. Um, one thing to remember is we, we're just ticking this engine over. It's a good high performance engine and we're just ticking it over because the engine's then coming out after Brands GP and we're going with Team EcoBoost. So um, yeah, lots to look forward to. Let's get cracking and get this bumper off. Just before I get started, you can kind of see where it's cracked along there. That was where I caught it on the dirt when I had my little excursion off at turn one because it was bloody bumpy along there. And this is an existing repair that's been broken um, but unfortunately we snagged it on the trailer coming off so I need to repair that so let's get started guess who forgot how much of a pain in the arse it is to take the bumper off this guy you have to take the headlights out to do it because it's just easier to get to the screws uh, it's 45 minutes later I've had to go and put my Silver Lake C1 racing hat on because it's bloody cold it's March for God's sake grow up weather oh, hopefully it's a bit uh, warmer in two weeks time but anyway, front bumper's off. Let's get to work on that first. Right, so we got the bumper off. Uh, I've mixed up some fiberglass. So this area here is where we've got the long running crack um, that sort of chipped the paint on the outside. So all I'm going to do is reinforce this bit here with a bit more fiberglass because I repaired that sensor bit as well because that had snapped in half last year. <clears throat> and I've got this side as well, which took a bit of fiberglass off. Well, that's cracked in a new area. So I'm going to reinforce it there, reinforce it in there, wait for it to dry i'll flip the bumper over a bit of um a tiny bit of filler and just sand that smooth make sure it's nice and dry and then i'll buy some rattle cans during the week um because next week i'm <clears throat> i've got some um, preparation time as well so all i'm doing is is using a typical resin kit it's a fiberglass resin kit that you buy from halfords i used it last time obviously I wouldn't say I use things sparingly, but I kind of use it properly and make sure that I don't waste anything. So, you know, I had a, a nice, decent full kit here and they're really handy kits. This is a one in, I think there's a Portuguese company that used to make these bumpers and they don't make them anymore. And they're really nice. They're based on the Millennium front bumpers and I just want to keep it because it looks really nice. So all I'm doing now is mixing it up. I've got my fiberglass where I want it kind of in there. So there's kind of two repair pieces on that lip that I kind of want to keep as is and I'm just literally pouring it 
Now, before people jump in the comments, I'm not a body shop man. I don't know if this is how you do it properly, but this is how I do it, and it worked on there, so. And I'm literally just spreading it on. So I assume the more you spread onto the fiberglass, the more it sticks. Especially if I get it in that lip. So, yes, I shall carry on doing a bit of this. You know what, I lied. Um, cracked on with these bits. So remember those side canards I made when I had to cut the gap because the front end just looked ridiculously wide, so that's all riveted in now. Just got a strip of aluminium, quite hard aluminium in there to hold it in, so that's got a bit of a curve on it now. Curves it in, so that'll go in well with the splitters. And that's that one done there as well. So just a little bit of heat on there to bring it in. And that's what it looks like on the outside. Nothing too pretty, it's not there to be pretty, it's there to be reasonably functional. Um, so hopefully that helps out with a bit of aero. I think next I'll get one of the splitters, lay it down on the table and sort of trace around the outside of the bottom of the bumper and see where we're at with it and get some mounting points. Right, so this is one of the splitters that have uh, been kindly given to us by Graves Motorsport. Um, so I've just offered the bumper up and that's the lip on the front bumper. So I want to bolt this splitter to the chassis, but also have a couple of retaining bolts just underneath the bumper there just to hold it all together, um, structure it all. So I'm just put three tiny little bolts in there. I'll put tiny, three tiny little screws in there just to hold the bumper onto it. I will uh, try and mount it to the front of the car. Um, I've got some spaces and basically I'm going to bolt it to the bracket at the bottom there. And hopefully that should be uh, tickety-boo for us. Wish us luck. Right, so I've just mounted it up to the chassis, took it back off again. Got two mounting holes now that's going to go onto that bracket. I've got spacers, but the spacings are wrong, so I just need to adjust those. Uh, either get some bits welded up or get some extra plate to put in its place just to space it out a little bit. Um, and then uh, should bolt up, ready to go. So that's the front bumper sorted. Obviously, I'll get this off now, run a bit of filler on, over those cracks just to make sure they're nice and tidy, ready for a rattle can job during the week. So time to do a bit of that. So looking at the front of the carb, there is a bit of drippy drippy around the sump, so I just need to get under there and clean it. It's, it's the sump weeping. I'm not losing oil. I did an entire day of running and I didn't lose any oil whatsoever. So I'll empty the breather can as well and a few other bits and get that done. So yeah, heading towards Snetterton, uh, from Snetterton, sorry, and, and, and heading to Silverstone. We're actually looking reasonably okay. Um, also need to update some stickers on there as well. So I've got some new ones cut, ready to go on. We're adding to the Silver Lake, we're adding Graves Motorsport, should have been on there all along, um, but finally got a vector sorted. Um, and I'm writing an important message on the back as well. Right, so a little update for you regards split amount. So I found this aluminium box section that I'm slicing into two bits of aluminium. It's actually at the right height. I've struck the mother load with that, so I'm really pleased. So that's going to help mount the back of the splitter onto the brackets at the front. So as soon as I'll get the other one cut up and done, I'll probably do that at the end of next week um, or during the evenings this week and get that done. Now, the other thing I've been working on is driver ergonomics. Um, I'm working a bit closely with Sam on that. We spent a bit of time sat in the car at Snetterton in the pit garage just going through some bits. So let's take you there now. Right, you join me at the side of the car. So we've got them normally keep the driver's door off. I've just done a load of work on moving this seat forward, probably about a good inch, inch and a half. And the main reason is if you look at a bit of an onboard here when I'm turning through a hairpin, I'm overreaching on the steering wheel. I'm like that, I'm stretching that's no good because it probably helped contribute to the fact that at Brands last year I did spin out instead of correcting the slide and then going on I just held on turned held on for as long as I could and it whipped round the other way so it slows down your reactions and affects you in certain ways like that so especially with opposite lock you need to have as as much sorted out with the driver ergonomics as possible so I've moved the seat forward the other thing is the steering column as well because I've got this big extension on it it sits up quite high so what I'm going to do is just unbolt where it mounts onto the crossbar now and I'm just going to put a couple of spacer washers in to bring it down a little bit 
um, only a millimetre or two, not a lot, and there's plenty of meat on the bolts going in anyway, so it just brings it down slightly and helps out with the ergonomics, and we'll see how that fares at Silverstone. Right. So it's Sunday evening. I'm home from work, where I've been doing lots of good filmings today. And the last part of this, because this is going to be a two-parter, my SNET debrief, and ultimately my prep for Silverstone. So I've got one weekend next weekend where I'm off and I can do what I need to do. And then ultimately, the next weekend after that will be Silverstone. So you lucky buggers, I'm aiming to get one video a week out of you guys. So yeah. So what I'm doing today is I've actually got some big spring washers which it's not a lot to put in terms of leverage but i'm hoping it's just that little bit to bring it down because as i am it's there and that's that's fine with me so i'm right up against it there that's that's absolutely fine so i've got enough that while i'm here i can it's giving me a bit more leverage and All good, so I'm happy with the renewed ergonomics and then I'm just going to drop this down, so let's crack on with this. And there we go, that's done, so that's got a spring washer and a nice big washer on there as well that brings it down, so ergonomically it feels a lot better. You know, it's something you don't think of, or you kind of just put the seat in and go, I can reach the steering wheel, but this feels a lot better for me. Um, it's a little bit lower as well, which is which is a lot better. So we're going to try this at Silverstone and uh, hopefully it works out a lot better than previous times. But I really have taken on board what Sam said to me at Snetterton. He's, he said it a few times, actually. He said it after Brands as well, and I wasn't too sure. But, well, I mean, he, he he's engineered championship winners, so you've got to listen to the people that have, uh, have got your interests at heart and sam's certainly one of those people and incidentally um for all your car preparation needs graves motorsport everyone down there are absolutely fantastic uh but that's it for part one of this episode of the low res ramble and that's part one of the sort of snet debrief at silverstone prep next week we're going to do another video i've got fiberglass bits coming i've got a bonnet i've got a rear wing i've still got to mount the spritter on properly with the new bracket so i'll be sorting that out during the week and we will finally tidy up that niggling at law leak. So for now, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you soon.